graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. And pretend that your kid just didn't tell you to come in his butt. <laughs> Stare at it. <laughs> What's with all the spitting in porn? <laughs> Why is everybody spitting on dicks nowadays? Some people have what we call verbal diarrhea. Stranger. It's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, the guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcast. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Colon and Austin Shooting. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Austin. And we're discussing Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. Yes. Um, I like the Kevin Hart rock dynamic. Yeah. Like the big guy, yeah, little guy. A, a little heart and a big Johnson. <laughs> that's the, oh, that's right. That was the, the, uh, the central, central intelligence tagline. Was like, I almost saw that movie because that was in the trailer. <laughs> I didn't, but like, if <laughs> that one line in the trailer brought me closer to seeing that movie than anything else in the trailer possibly could. Because <laughs> there was like a CGI fat rock. Like Rock was fat when it was like. I guess this is the backstory is sort of like Kevin Hart as a teenager. Save Rock as like this fat teased kid in high school. Something like that. <laughs> and then now the Rock is grown up and he's all like super muscular and and, and but somehow his friends involved with something or I don't, do you, do you, oh you, you said you didn't see it. So no, <laughs> I didn't see it. Either. Oh, cool. Let's keep talking about this movie we haven't seen. <laughs> do you think that there's a mom in it? Um, a mom as in like the Rock's mom. Just somebody's like mom, Hercules, Hercules. Like, like one of the characters sees their mom at some point. It doesn't have to be Kevin Hart or The Rock's character. Just a, an, a mom in the movie. Yeah, let's, let's speculate. We haven't seen it. <laughs> do, you, do you think the mom uh, wears a, a blue shirt? No. No. What color Why shirt? Wear blue shirts. What color shirt do you think the mom wears? Pink. What's it say on the back of the shirt? Ladies. <laughs> on the back of the shirt just says, uh, "Mom's out." <laughs> mom's. Mom's out. Girl, gals. Look mom's the, night out. That's what it mom, says. It says mom's night out on the back, and on the front it says dad's not in. <laughs> Sounds like a porno. Yeah. Mom's night out. Right, we're gonna take a quick break while I put gas in the car. <laughs> we'll be right back. Lying mother nature. That ball. It's not letting me buckle. <laughs> like you, you leave the house it's like 50 degrees. You leave work and it's snowing. It's great. We're all we're both wearing thin jackets. Are we live again. It's yeah. Just fucking. Ah, I can't move. It's doing that thing where, I, like, I pull my seatbelt too far. Like where it locks. When, like when you're trying to get a car seat really secure, <laughs> but like you're a bad parent, so <laughs> you don't use the hooks. <laughs> Fucking. Well, I guess this is just how life is. Like, <laughs> if just, I want, just if don't I want, take deep breaths. If I want my seatbelt to like work like a seatbelt, I need to get out of the car. <laughs> you, have, the, you have to let it go all the way back. Right. And, then, and for some reason, I thought my body was in the way of that happening. Not the case. <laughs> that, was, that was a stupid thing to say. So uh, you kind of have a funny story about uh, yeah. Colton. Yeah, so my, my son is five years old. Uh-huh. And he started doing this thing that he considers the height of comedy, where he'll say something, then he'll say it again, but he'll replace one word with butt. So he'll be like, I picked up my toys. I picked up my butt. <laughs> I love you, Mom. I butt you, Mom. And then last night he wanted me to come see something in his room, so he said, Hey, come in my room. Come in my butt. <laughs> and uh, so that's tough to react to. Because <laughs> you can't tell him not to say that, because that'll ensure that he starts saying that all the fucking time. Uh, you, you can't laugh. 
because I'll ensure that he says that all the fucking time. So you just kind of need to be stone faced about it and be like, oh, you crazy kid, and just move the fuck on and pretend that your kid just didn't tell you to come in his butt. <laughs> Please don't invite strangers to come in your butt. Right. <laughs> don't ask people to go into your room and then do that. You're really funny. But that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> What's that age where kids are sort of like right. they're experimenting, like with yeah. they're but pushing their boundaries? He's, he's trying to be funny, but he doesn't realize that there's this whole extra <laughs> level of funny that he doesn't have access to yet. <laughs> it's like you know, if you read the Harry Potter books, how like his uncle Vernon cut his hair, shaved it down to like nothing, and then the next day it all grew back, and Harry doesn't know how it happened. It's like that. It's like. You, you, you landed on comedy fucking gold and you have no way of understanding or replicating it. It's like, uh, like my daughter, because I'm a horrible parent and I was playing a uh, fractured, the South Park fractured butthole. And so she's, she, you know, not that, you know, not that she was watching me play, but she would come and she'd sit there for like 10, 20 minutes and get bored or whatever. And uh, I don't know why I decided to describe to her the city chicken as a shitty chicken. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, and of course she it's found it a, hilarious. It's a shitty chicken. A shitty chicken. And then, so then she started walking around for the rest, of, like, like the next couple of days, saying, "Dad, you want shitty chicken? <laughs> you want shitty beef?" I was like, "Please don't say that to your, don't say that in your mom's house." I'm gonna get that fucking phone call. So today, yeah. you know, we've been, we've been mentioning like our coworkers in this podcast, and today I was working alongside one of the newer gentlemen. Once again, oh. not not born in this country. Banana. Born in, born in Nepal. Nepal? Nepal. So nice, I'm, quiet Nepal. Did, so, did he offer you any free Tibet? I hear it's delicious. Uh, I went to the Beastie Boys free Tibet concert. Is that a little story you've got to tell? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, Beastie Boys, the Ramones, when Joey was still alive. So yeah, how like, long like, well, that was. Joey Fatone? Joey Ramone. Yeah. Did everything? Oh. Well, okay, that kind of off by one syllable. Can I ever that tell you that my, my my connection with Joey Fatone? No. Are well, you, are you about to? Yeah. <laughs> you about to bring this fun train to a grinding halt to tell me about a celebrity you're like connected to vaguely? Well, I, I am I am the modern day Joey Fatone. Well, no, in the Fatone or Ramon? Fatone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I hope it's worth all that noise. <laughs> no. Um. When I went when I recorded the. Uh, the, when I originally recorded the Jack and Triumph show, right. my original role was Poker Buddy, and uh, they were going to have me on the show, and, and I was going to be like their modern, their modern day Poker Buddy, where it was going to be me, Tay Zonde, um, just that guy Tony Little, the fitness guru Tony Little, oh, and like uh, fucking insanity or type of uh, the one that does the the Gazelle track, if I'm not mistaken. Is he the bald black guy? No, that no, was no. a joke. They all are. Um, oh no! This was the hyper white guy with the long stringy hair. He's very, I'm, very I'm hyper. Take your word for it. He's he super positive. Like all right, like um, HIV. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> and uh, and when mind. you see him up close, it's like his face is so much plastic surgery. It's ridiculous. Right. Anyway, uh, but it was nice to me. So. They were having, uh, it was supposed to be like they're, they're doing a poker game. They have a poker game that they were doing back in the 80s in their height of their fame. Or I, I guess it was the 80s, but for some reason Joey Fatone was there as their poker buddy. Well, now I'm very lost. Uh, it was, uh, it's uh, Jack McBrayer and, and uh, Triumph Insult Comic Dog. And the gist of the show was they were on a Lassie-like TV show. I believe, I thought it was supposed to be the 80s, but I guess it's maybe more the 90s. And... Then the show, you know, the show ended, and now they, here they are in modern day, where they're trying to resort back to their lives, and Triumph is going to, you know, become, like, homeless and all this other stuff, and Jack McBrayer has kind of, like, gone back to being, like, a very innocent person. You know, Jack McBrayer always plays those innocent characters and stuff like that, and then tri- he comes across Triumph in the street or whatever, and he moves in back in, and they, in all hilarity ensues, and then my episode was where they actually went to Comic-Con, because that's where... It, it was actually at Comic Con when they approached me if I wanted to be in the show, and uh, it was Jack McBrayer doing anything for his fans to make money. So you know, it looks like he's doing autographs, but then he's he's uh, eating uh, like 
the per, but it's like you have the person hold like a bowl of soup in their hands they'll eat the bowl of soup and then my thing is he was giving me a, a back rub and it's funny because it's a fat guy with no shirt and a bald head and you know two years worth of, of beard growth and a goatee and him rubbing my shoulders and I was looking like I was an ecstasy and I was rubbing my shoulders so uh, they they were that was part of you know they, that was how the show was they would have on, on the man on the street so you only pretended to be an ecstasy well, yeah, well, that was, I, let me say Jack McBrayer was very funny because I said, well, that, you know, the one more thing on my bucket list, <laughs> having Jack McBrayer rub my shoulders, and, and he, I mean, he might have just been laughing out of just being a nice guy, but he was generally, like, like he was generally laughing, and then I said, uh, you know, when I woke up this morning, I never would have thought, <laughs> and he was laughing at that, and then the funny thing is, so they filmed the scene where he's rubbing my shoulders, I was supposed to look like I'm in ecstasy, so I'm there with my shirt off. You were like, I got a hankering for a happy ending. Fix it, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we're there, and they're recording, and they're kind of, and I'm standing there just in case they need to do more, whatever. And Tom Kenny, the voice of fucking SpongeBob, comes over and fucks you. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows he knows Robert Smigel, you know, Triumph, and uh, Jack McRae, and you know, and what happened was is they had set up like a fake booth right alongside real booths. And the funny thing is, coincidentally enough, one of the booths that they, that was a couple of booths down was uh, Bill William Shatner, who I ended up interviewing later on. In the other, uh, so like he's harassed, like he's shouting, you know, Triumph does those man on the street bits or dog on the street bits, where you know, so he's there. So that stuff is that stuff wasn't scripted, you know, where he's yelling at William Shatner and he's yelling. But Tom Kenny comes over, the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. So I have a, a picture of me with no shirt on, with a towel over my shoulder. <laughs> With Tom Kenny uh, at a at Comic Con, but yeah, so Joey the in the earlier part of the episode when they're doing the flashback, Joey Fatone is playing poker with them, and then now that they're in the modern day, after him rubbing my shoulders at Comic Con, I was the poker buddy. But they switched me out because some fucking intern recognized that the, one of the tattoos on my upper arm was a Metallica album cover. And it's like, oh, that's going to be a, a, a copyright issue or whatever. So they pulled me out, and then they had this other kid, and they had him be the poker. But they filmed the scene with me, and then like she, like she, and then, they, and then they were showing that man on the street to the stuff and the, to the people in the live studio audience. And then like the intern was like, that that tattoo, that's a that's an album cover, right? And I said, yeah, you know. And I said, oh well, you can't have that on the show. And they so they re-recorded that scene with another guy, who like went in the. Uh, Jack McBrayer trying to please his fans segment. They they strapped on rubber boobs on him, and Jack McBrayer was like sucking milk from the boobs. So that was. No, uh, I, I have to say that is better. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack McBrayer rubbing a fat guy's like a guy who has like a hairy back and but his bald and a big long biker beard. If you told me uh -huh. you can watch Jack McBrayer rub a fat guy's back. Or you can watch him suck milk out of fake tits on a man. <laughs> and, it, you know, completely unbiased, like, hey, the fat guy's your friend. Uh -huh. you know, the, the, if that wasn't part of the equation, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the tits. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm watching this weird lactation finish. I'm sorry. But to make, it up, to make it up to me, they had me in the other scene where I'm with uh, Michael Winslow, the guy from the Police Academy movies, and Spaceballs. The sweeps, the beeps, and the creeps. What, what, what? And uh, where he's he's selling merchandise from like the Police Academy movies and Spaceballs, and I'm like a guy buying stuff from from Michael Winslow. See, isn't that better? It's more wholesome. Yeah, and, you know, and uh, like you can show that to your kids later on. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, you're, yeah, you're, like, like, you're like a real actor then. Yeah, you know, like some weird German shaija. <laughs> And there is, I do have a picture, and that's like my Twitter photo. It's like, it's me, Michael Winslow, Jack, uh, and Jack McBrayer, and Triumph Insult Comic Dog all on one screen. I'm like, yay! Hey, one of these things is not like the other. So uh, I just wanted to address one thing that I wanted to start the show with, but I guess is... <laughs> well, it's in the show. Uh, no, no. Uh, Paul is still part of the show. Oh. I just, you know, I just wanted, like, for the fans or whatever, Paul, it's just... You know, without the car, without me having my car and you would drive me home, you know, these just seem to be a bit more convenient to record. And so oh, it's, it's not like Paul's been kicked off the show or anything so this like is that. a convenience thing. 
Well, no, it's no, not. No, I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've been wanting to. I want to get episodes out. Like, you know, I want this to be a weekly show, but you know, Paul with his schedule and his other podcast and his two jobs, and, you know, and a kid and a girlfriend, and you know, he's a busy guy. So we can bust out an hour and fifteen minutes of content every week. Yeah, in this, in this format. The sound quality is not the best. Yeah, it's not the best. And, and I, I'm looking for my I'm looking for my other recorder that I had. And like when I do finally get a car, like I think I kind of want to keep this up at least for a little while, or I'll drive you like to make up for the. <laughs> we still got to record. Yeah, but just like when there's not snow. Yeah, so I, I barely trust myself. I don't trust anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna I was I was gonna get in the car. Getting a lot of huge fucking rant about our wonderful coworker who we've talked about before on the show, oh. and and I'm a, he's let's, a let's fucking keep it light and have fun. He's man. a fucking prick. Let me just get this out of. Let me just get this out of my side. He's a fucking prick. You got to get to the gas station. And I hope he fucking dies while driving home and has a fucking heart attack. Because the good thing is you don't see too many tall, fat, old guys. <laughs> the guy sweats just fucking standing there. So I hope he has a fucking heart attack. While he's driving home on the way to fucking Macedon, redneck fucking ass Macedon, and smashes into a fucking tree. And I do feel bad because, like, he probably has kids and shit like that, and, and, and a wife or whatever, but I, I, I hope he fucking has a widow and a fucking. Well, I know. I guess what's, a, what's, what's the widow version of his kid? A, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> half bastard? Bastard? Uh, no. Bastard mean, bastard doesn't a bastard mean no parent, no father? No. Oh. Oh, a bastard means that you're. You were conceived out of wedlock. Oh. I was under the, always under the impression that bastard meant like no dad. Like, yes. also, when you said half bastard, you could have said half orphan. Half orphan! Orphan! I you're, hope you're, you're, you're looking, a orphan. You're, you're looking for the word orphan there, buddy? Orphan. Is that too deep in the bag? Well, you're a bastard. I mean, not you're a bastard. I'm saying the person. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it on you guys. I am a bastard. It's fine. It's all we get. Don't Light just stare and eat it. <laughs> Are you going to get a dog? Uh, no, I'm not going to get a dog. Oh. I just wanted to make you feel bad. Oh. <laughs> I want to make you feel bad talking about how you want fucking dogs to die. <laughs> I don't want all dogs to die. I just want pit bulls to die. <laughs> I was nipped by a pit bull. Right. You were nipped by a pit bull that was raised to be a dick. And now you're like, well, they should all die. <laughs> it's like, you know what, man? Hitler was a real bad egg. We should nuke Austria. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you put it that way, obviously we should do Austria. That's not, that's not really the point. <laughs> the opinions of us should do not necessarily reflect who's doing one podcast or SoundCloud or something. <laughs> Fuck, man. Next time, try to get all the sounds of the words in. But you are going to get a cat, though, all right? Are you in, uh, the, are you in the, the market the, for a cat? The idea is we have, uh, we have a hamster. We have two guinea pigs. Uh-huh. And when one rodent set is dead, so we have a hamster, both the guinea pigs, we will then get a cat. Because as it is right now, we're just we're just always cleaning rodent shit and feeding rodents and you know being, making sure that we take them out of their cage once in a while to play. These hamsters don't have much of a shelf life, right? They go about a year, uh, right? two to three years. Two to three years. Like, like four years is a bull fucking hamster. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had maybe because I went to like really just, chintzy pet stores or whatever. He could have just been bad at you know keeping pets alive. <laughs> That's not something worth considering. You mean they don't let go when you throw them up high and hit the ceiling no. and then have them drop on the floor? All the hamsters I had didn't even come close to that. <laughs> well, if it's all the hamsters, maybe it's you. <laughs> well, I used to go to a real low-rent pet store. Should I say my dad took me to a really like low-rent pet store? But uh, They're not like vegetables. They don't breed the hamster. <laughs> it's a B-grade hamster, man. It was a... It's a, it a, a factory second hamster. You only got about six months in this. <laughs> but like... Like before, it was a pet store. It was like a bodega. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> John Bodega from Star Wars. <laughs> All right. So let me. Uh, my uh, I uh, my my Nepal story. Oh yeah, you that I started yesterday. But for the listeners, it'll just be a couple minutes ago. You, you, you did not start it yesterday. <laughs> You're like Nepal. Okay, let's talk about something else. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, uh, I don't even remember what we talked about, but it was the rest of the ride. Well, okay. So we had. One of our, two of our newer co-workers or gentlemen, not born in this country, and not that that's, a, that's an issue, but... I know, some, I know they came here legally. <laughs> I know you came here illegally. Ah, he's a fucking asshole. Well, yeah, what a fucking dick. Uh, anyway. You said he's the little finger yeah, of he, our job. He's, he's, he's the little finger of our workplace. Oh, tries to be all these behind-the-scenes machinations, like, oh, I'm your friend, right? Sure. 
<laughs> so we we're, were we're getting off topic. We're, again. we're never good. We're never going to tell fall. the Nepal story. So, That's okay uh, though. So I had Taco Bell today. And, I don't know, <laughs> so I don't want to say during some downtime, but you know, him and I would just sort of there we're working right next to each other. And so um, I don't know how, but the, the concept just came up of like you know him living in Rochester and how he came from Nepal. Now, mind you, this is the same guy that we mentioned earlier. Was a lazy fucking piece of shit. So Why is he's growing on me. Yeah. <laughs> I got him. He's growing on. Well, me. okay. So then, well, that's so. <laughs> I, you know, and I, so he's telling me his story and basically he says how he was born in Nepal. He lived in India for a little while. Like, he, like his brother was born in India. He's moved back and forth. He prefers India, but he always ends up back in Nepal. But his wife has, he's kind of got a nepunky on his back. Nepunky. <laughs> and so he, nipple, Nepal, nipple. He's got his nipple on his back. I was trying to make a monkey on his back joke. It's like, oh, I keep going back to Nepal, man. You you brought it somewhere weird. And just like, Nepal kind of looks like nipple if you swim. I guess so. But it's like a brown nipple, not a pink nipple. Whoa. Uh, Whoa, wait. So. so, Because it's the prank. (laughs) And so his his wife has family, like here in Rochester. Shit. So. Well, I guess, you know. Well, there's there. a large contingency. Like, since Rochester is so close to Canada, there's a lot of people from East Asia that move from East Asia to Canada. Of the and, land then, bridge. and then, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they come all the way through the Bering Strait. And that's why and they, they call swim. It, that's why they're called the Indians. They <laughs> 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 swim across the Bering Strait. <laughs> I, I pictured it. It was pretty great. It was like a polar plunge, but also a triathlon. <laughs> it's like we could see Sarah Palin's house over here. So then, <laughs> so, deep cuts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you sick know. bird on the 2008 election. <laughs> wait, wait, was it? No, was it 2000? 2000? Yeah, it was 2000. Oh, okay, and so um, how his wife? Okay, so now we always talk about how he's a lazy piece of shit. So he yeah. talked about how he was a principal in a school over there, and even he himself admits, goes, "Oh, I was the. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to say. I'm not. I definitely want to do it. Don't want to do any don't, affectations don't, of don't, his voice because do that may come off as racist. Even though you already started. I, I was about to start doing it. and I didn't mean to. But he's like, oh, you know, in my country, I was the principal of a school, and I didn't have to do much. I said hi to the kids. I walked around. I said hi to the teachers. I did payroll, and that was my day. That was." Those were like his words. So then he goes, and then my boss, I was making 11,000 rupees a month. Wow. And I'm like, rupees, okay, you know, 11,000, that's a lot of, that's got to be a lot of fucking money. And I'm kind of glad that I had a chance to go home after hearing this story to do a little research. Turns out, our one Nepal listeners laughing his ass out. <laughs> 11,000 rupees a month is. U.S. dollar equivalent to $127. Now, let's just say, even if I misheard him, and he said he was making 11,000 rupees a week, that's still only $127 a week, which is nothing. So he was a principal in a school, which I guess, you know, I could probably be the principal in that school. I don't know, um, man. You got any experience with payroll? <laughs> and apparently, I don't, I'm not good enough to be fucking hired. Um, so uh, he... Like, you didn't even need a paycheck this week. <laughs> Yeah. You, have, you have an experience with payroll deficit. Like if things they get things aren't fucking hard enough as it is, my fucking check didn't even come in payroll. So I'm like I'm broke without a car, uh, with nothing. With, with, with. It's the middle of the night we're wearing sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Rochester Nazis. Um, so how was your day, yeah, sir? It's, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> You're in the middle of reading uh, Dark Tower? Uh, drawing it at three? The, the, drawing it the three? middle. Uh, I've got like fucking a double digit number of pages left in drawing it at three. I'll be on Wastelands tomorrow. All right, so at the end of drawing it at three. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm, I'm joining you on this journey because I've had the audiobooks on my hard drive for years and I've listened to them all. But, and, uh, and, okay, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and is fucking lapping us on this journey. He's, he started on like Sundays halfway through the Wastelands. Because, <laughs> uh, He's got a phone with all the books on it and no supervision all day at work. <laughs> so 
Well, in all fairness, he's, like... He's just been reading Dark Tower around us. Yeah, I'm saying, I mean, in all fairness, he's on call. He shows up when he's when yeah. he's called. He does his job when he's called. Uh, and, and, so if and, he has downtime to fucking it's, goof off... It's a, it's a good day when they don't need the mechanic. Yeah. It's, it's just funny, because... He like, earns his downtime if he has downtime. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. He, he, he's like, hey, did you finish drawing with me? I'm like, no, I'm like, I got, like, 100 pages left. He's like, oh, it's about halfway through Wastelands right now. Like, where the fuck do you get the time? <laughs> like, I get most of the reading done here, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, man? And uh, the funny thing is that my, my current work shoes are his old shoes. Like, he bought shoes, and they're like, oh, they, they were pinching my feet. So it's a bunch of room. You got nice feet. <laughs> well, I know. That's the whole thing is that, like. Did you sit in the front no, no, of they were, they're, they're brand new, New Balance uh, shoes that are steel toed, and he just gave them to me. And oh, I don't know, bro. I don't know what to like. How do you thank that? Like, I think you gotta suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he goes, oh, they're a size ten and a half. Anybody need a size ten and a half shoes? And I'm like, I'm a ten and a half. So he's like, all right, first you gotta take this size size ten and a half guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means, ten and a half. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're gonna find a new balance between pain and pleasure. <laughs> Like <laughs> <laughs> you with a blow dart, so you can't resist. <laughs> What's with all the spitting in porn? <laughs> Why is everybody spitting on dicks nowadays? That's disgusting. I don't, I don't like it. Like spitting like on their own dicks, or having or women girl, spit on their women dicks? spitting or on a guy's dick. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> everybody's spitting on everybody's genitals in porn nowadays. I guess I'm not keeping up with the the current meta of porn, so I don't. <laughs> it, uh, I mean, you know, I'm single. I jerk off frequently. I mean, in my forties now, so it's it's. Every other day, as opposed to every day, but uh, you know, there's day, day, day one's like the setup process. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get, gotta get some scaffolding here and keep everything uh, where it needs to be. <laughs> but it's like you know, like how porn, like you know, like in the seventies, everyone had fucking hairy bushes. So now, if you watch any modern porn, nobody has a hairy bush. You're saying 2018 is the year of the spit dick? Yeah, or 2017. Like everybody's everyone, <laughs> hey, you know, everybody's spitting on you know, spitting on dick, spitting, and I'm like, I don't find that attractive. And if anybody, oh, I mean, of course, you, you don't. You want to go on record right now saying you don't like dicks covered in saliva? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I would if I was with that's someone that spit. Hot take. On, if I was on someone that spit on my dick, I would like. I mean, I'd be happy that my dick is in their hand or in their mouth or whatever. But I, I, I would ask them not to do it again. It's, not, it's just spit. It's not like you know. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a piss on your dick and then you're gonna put it inside me. Okay. Actually, that's not right. It's not right. Yeah, I just yeah, you're not the, you're just there's there's an uncomfortable amount of. Spit in porn nowadays. I don't like it. Do it, do it. Make this the break. You're talking about spit dicks. <laughs> <laughs> spit on my knife. Shit on my knife or spit on my dick. More than zero? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Some people have what we call verbal diarrhea. <laughs> Read the room. Like you were just saying. Read the room. <laughs> see if anybody's reading. <laughs> like earlier while you were reading. Yep. You oh, oh, you, you missed the mollusks. You missed the mollusks, and I watched the something in bubble show on on public on public TV, and that's how I know that that's a moray eel. Shut the fuck up! Nobody's talking to are, you. Are mollusks the gunslinger? <laughs> no, then I don't give a fuck. <laughs> They're holding a book called the gunslinger. Doesn't that sound way cooler than mollusks? <laughs> you piece of hog shit. <laughs> oh, imagine being married to that. No. Don't you fucking tell me to do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Imagine being married to that and then dead because you killed yourself because you didn't want it anymore. Like, you didn't even want to deal with the fucking, like, court shit for getting rid of the marriage. So you're just like, well, this is my life now. And you fucking get a bunch of razor wire and, like, put it in the noose around your head. Then you fucking super glue your hands to your face and let yourself drop so it looks like you ripped your own head off. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, me imagining being married to... Because it's just like, oh, like nobody's acknowledging her. Yeah. And she still talks. What the hell is this guy's problem? Yeah. Um, nope, that's a Walmart. Oh, my God, Sam's Club. Oh, it's not, there's no Sam's Club anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. They, they took the sign off the building. That was fast. Oh, they, they sold it. It was big. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And it's the commercial for Costco. Like, we welcome all Sam's Club members. Get your... Get your new membership for half bring, off. Bring your Sam's Club membership card and we'll suck your dick for your business. <laughs> but in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> bring you and ten friends and we'll suck every dick. <laughs> or have your dick sucked by ten people. <laughs> yeah. 
It is the same price. Guaranteed the price match any whore on the street. <laughs> ten dick suckings for the price of, you know, ten dick suckings, <laughs> but like retail price, you know? Yeah. Or, no, not retail you price. Know, usually I pay like a $50 for a, for a blowjob. No, that's a lot, right? <laughs> usually I pay $20 for a blowjob. We can get you our... Yeah. Blowjob discount card. It, it works out to about eleven bucks a blowjob, you know, as long as you buy at least ten blowjobs. <laughs> uh, get these blowjobs in bulk. Hi, I'm, I'm Sam. I'm Sam the Pimp. This is Sam's Club. <laughs> we're going out of business, so we're having a going out of business sale. All right, come you on, buy, bitches. You buy ten pussies, you get a last pussy for just a penny. All right, <laughs> do you think you can beat that pussy for just a penny? If you can find cheaper pussy anywhere else, fuck it. <laughs> I'll say, I say, I, I used to call me Costco. They sold me for the, they sold me, no. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> so, fucking Sam Club, the wet cream pimp. <laughs> I'm not the most, I'm not the most uh, business wise pimp in the world. I'm not what you'd call good at my job. <laughs> they say the game is to be sold, not to be told. But I was asking, I was, I don't know what I said. <laughs> but I, I, he, he motherfuckers see Jumanji. <laughs> wow, you just, you didn't even segue, man. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fucking sad. We wanted to put him in a home, but he's really good at pimping. He's got a whole fucking stable, man. I mean, what are you going to do? He's got yeah. hot and cold pussy on his hat. Like, you don't want to put that in a nursing home. You're going to hurt us that energy. <laughs> you don't want all those hookers out of the job. Yeah. Ain't nothing worse than an unemployed hooker. Can a, hook, can a hooker be out of, off the job? Can I click? Yeah, my my hoes get dental and an unemployment plan. Cat Williams is falling hard <laughs> fucking times. It's pimpin' pimpin'. It's a, senile, it's a senile pimp that calls himself Sam's Club. <laughs> Bitch better have my coupons. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You, you need a membership card if you want to get with these. Uh, you're, a, you're a pimp with a paper trail? <laughs> that, that just seems like you're asking for disaster. <laughs> you get three round the world, throwing the fourth book for free. Around the world? Do people even still use that term, around the world? What the fuck is around the world? Around the world is like... Like, like ho- some hookers would be like just... Some hookers are just gonna give up, like, a, give a blowjob, or some hookers will just give you the pussy, but you can't Around fuck the world, them in the ass. Just, yeah. They surrender every hole in order of cleanliness. <laughs> yeah. They're well, of their <laughs> From cleanest to dirtiest. Yeah. And then back again. <laughs> yeah, we call it the round the world. Yeah, that's like an old term. That's like, like you know, guys from the Navy would like get out under the fleet week and. <laughs> and then just give each other. <laughs> That was like a you own around the like world. A, you know, I was like, no help. They gave each other help. Yes. <laughs> no, no, you know, like, Plenty of assistance. One had AIDS, gave it to a hooker. Another guy went to the same hooker, got AIDS, fucked one of his baby brothers, gave him AIDS. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just use a condom always, <laughs> even when cooking. <laughs> it's like if you're like a, an elementary school teacher. Proudly said at a parent teacher conference, like, and I just want you to know, when I'm teaching your, your child, I always wear a condom. You know, strictly <laughs> speaking, it's better than the alternative, but someone's doing their job very wrong. Yeah, we say we pass the savings on to you. We don't even use condoms, man. We, use, we got one condom per bitch. She rinses that shit out between. <laughs> All my bitches are using the rhythm method. <laughs> <laughs> I need the the t-shirt of that. All my bitches are using the rhythm method. (laughs) Oh, oh, that sound means it's time for the rapture. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Colin, with your guess of which archangel is going to put a sword through my chest. If she's bleeding, you're not believing these prices. (laughs) (laughs) It felt like you were going to make a rhyme. So far, that's been the most disappointing part of the ride. (laughs) If she's bleeding, you ain't believing these prices. What? (laughs) My name is Buck, and I came here to party. (laughs) I was so ready.
already like, oh, let's get a ride with the lead then. They're, they're bleeding. He's, He's got, got water bleed. on the brain, okay? <laughs> He's not the sharpest. He's got fucking hydrocephalic. <laughs> I'm Sam's Club, the hydrocephalic pimp. Sam's Club. <laughs> Sam's Club. Suck my shunt, bitch. <laughs> Sam's Club, the hydrocephalic pimp. His catchphrase is suck my shunt. And if she's bleeding, you won't be believing these prices. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> See, that was, like, funnier than, but also more wholesome than the Gary Fisher thing. <laughs> we all had fun. Nobody with hydrocephalia lived long enough to be offended by that. And nobody did coke out of a dog <laughs> Well, look. If you if you are hydrocephalic and you you've lived long enough to have a career as a pimp, then I love you and die. <laughs> <laughs> you looked really fucking cool. Man. I find we find you finky <laughs> and we like you a lot. Before I get into this argument, we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes. This episode of Two Strangers One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. Eleven Fifteen East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comics etc one. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, uh, necrophilia. Uh, uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit wwwclick the letter n hitcom That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. So feedback from the last episode. Oh, we got some? Well, yeah. People listen to it? Yeah. Well, a longtime listener, Tommy B, commented on the Facebook page and he said... Yeah, he's uh, a fucking asshole. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he could have said something really funny, really nice. I'm alienating him right now. <laughs> I was just like, I feel the venom in your lead up. Like, so this guy sounds like he fucked his mom twice. Anyway, sorry. Continue, and then I'll, then I'll pass it. Well, he said, you can't trust a guy who doesn't like pickles. 
<laughs> All right. So, well, then, yeah. Right, right. So, uh, I want him to buy so the giant fuck you stance. Yeah, I want to. I want to buy him a horse to ride in on, so that fuck both of them. <laughs> oh yeah, this is cool. I like semi trucks with their hazards on, stopped in my exit. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Oh, he has one of those reflective triangles about five feet in front of the, the truck. That's there's nice. There's two. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, yeah. They can even see the other one. <laughs> the lot lizard said this spot was safe. <laughs> Where's Sam's club? <laughs> Sam's club assured me that there'd be no cops on this stretch. Man. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a savant. I memorized their patterns. Ain't none of my hoes been caught. Except the ones that did, but they dead. <laughs> and the bitches, they don't, they don't count no more. I don't know. <laughs> Are we allowed to do like this pick in the universe? Well, <laughs> if Cat Williams can do it. <laughs> Isn't it? Black. I needed to finish the thoughts and I was like, you just called Cat Williams a picket? <laughs> it ain't racist if you do an impersonation. Can I say picket? <laughs> well, you know, is you know. <laughs> do, do, do I have pen word privileges? <laughs> if there's a dash, it's okay. <laughs> is it though? It was, is, oh, I guess it's not a, is that a dashed word? No. Is uh, that a conjoined word? Is that Tommy B, he'll take your side on it. <laughs> Fucking asshole, Tommy B. <laughs> if all his fucking teeth fall out, all his, kid, his kid never learns how to read. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> Hope he never has kids. Well, that was, I was, it was, I mean, just last night, I was wishing one of my co workers' child to be an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> you were so mad you couldn't even think of the word orphan. <laughs> And I was stuck working with him today. One of those, one of those buildings called it doesn't have a parentage. <laughs> and you're stuck working with I was today. stuck how, working how with that? him today. And, it, you know, and the funny thing is that, like, I don't think he knows how much I fucking hate his guts. Because it's weird. Like, I, I'm sort of I'm nice to the people I hate. Yeah. Like, if I tease you and it's, whatever, it's, and I go... feel fucking counterintuitive. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm polite and professional. The fuckers I hate, and I'll joke around with the ones I like. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so... <laughs> yeah, and he's just... And, and what happened was, today, we just happened... The machines weren't working correctly, so we had a lot of fucking downtime. And yeah, he's I telling me... you guys just fucking sitting there. Oh, he's telling me fucking stories about his daughter and her cracked cell phone screen, and he, meant, he mentioned the fucking the bone spurs in his foot that we hope calcify and goes into his fucking heart. And it's like, I'm, you know, and I'm trying my best to be like civil but he's but got no barometer for whether someone's gonna give a shit what he's about to say yeah and it's like when when he's not talking i'm not talking yeah. i'm literally staring at the fucking clock staring at the wall you know and he just has no fucking uh doesn't know how to read the room <laughs> he's like oh you know one of those new guys he's a he's an arrogant prick talking about one of the new uh the newer guys uh, one of the gentlemen from another new. country <laughs> Oh shit! Did I use his name. Is that the first time. <laughs> I'll bleep it out. We just we just popped the, uh, the I cherry. Yeah, I know. Bleep that one too. Yeah. <laughs> bleep them all. That's gonna be a lot of bleeping. Put funky town in there. <laughs> I want to get you sued or fired. <laughs> it's a uh, fair use. <laughs> I was recording. Uh, I to save the. The identity of protect the identity of <laughs> but uh oh. so he's like yeah you know one of those new guys oh he's such an arrogant bastard and I was telling him how to do his job and he was telling me that I was wrong and you know it's like the pot calling the kettle fat what was it uh <laughs> was it T or A it was T uh, oh yeah, well he's a fucking asshole well no he is an asshole <laughs> I, I just I've but, noticed like, like, like A has grown up Mm-hmm. He's 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 an all right dude. You know, well, he's, A he's, is the guy from but, Nepal. Oh yeah, <laughs> callback. He's, yeah. he's he's benign, but T, uh-huh. he's got this fucking shit eating grin all the time. Laughs when something goes wrong for you, and fucking just sits there, just sits in a chair any opportunity he gets. God damn, dude! I just I, I prayed for Sids today because <laughs> he just had a baby. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, and like I felt awful immediately after, but like the thought was like, God, it would, it would get him out of here for like at least a fucking week. I know, right? Welcome to we're going to hell. Well, and I mean, like, what best case scenario? That kid gets raised by him. <laughs> wow. 
If you don't include the sits thing in the final <laughs> cut, I'm like, really, it's up to you. I won't listen. <laughs> Tell you what, if you include the sits thing, just don't put it in the, the description. Sits, it's bonus content. <laughs> just call it kids with sits and replace both eyes with Y's. And go well, Nate and seven seven kids for sis. Nate seven seven sis for kids. One well, eight seven. There's that. There's that commercial for uh, like cars for kids. Oh. And one eight seven seven cars for so kids. So you're turning it into kids with one eight car. One eight seven seven cool. sits for kids. You just use car as a number. <laughs> <laughs> one eight car eight shit. <laughs> And it's one eight seven seven cars for kids. It's Donate silent, your car today. It's a silent clay, <laughs> <laughs> and it's spelled with a. It's cars k cars with a k. Cars k y r d. K a r yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Three mixed together into what I like to call brown cow. <laughs> coffee, milk, and soda. Well, coffee and milk is cafe latte. And you mix it with soda. What would that be? Are we rolling it? Right yeah, we're rolling. All right. Well, I, um, milk and soda, well, like milk and cola, is called a brown cow. It was popularized on the Golden Girls, I believe. Or it could be a. Um, really? I can't see the Golden Girls I, drinking. No, uh, I forget the, shit, why can't I think of the name? Uh, Life, Life La, 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 No, Laverne and Shirley. That's what it was. Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley popularized a drink called the brown cow, which would mix milk and cola. Oh, okay. And then I went to Thanksgiving, and my little brother made himself a brown cow, because apparently he'd been watching Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> and he's like, he's 14, why are you watching Laverne and Shirley, man? Because got... it's a classic TV show, yeah, that's he, why. Dude, you got an internet connection, go flog your cock. Anyway. Well, when you're once you're done flogging your cock, you want to enjoy some wholesome family comedy. Anyway. Like, when I mentioned, uh, <laughs> I mentioned uh, Happy Days, you're like, know your audience. I'm like, it's a classic TV show. Yeah, if you're 50. <laughs> anyway, um, so I tried the brown cow. Uh-huh. Fucking nasty, dude. I was about to say, because what if the acid in the soda and the milk and the... the... It, it doesn't curdle, but it just... It all neutralizes itself, so it's just like... It's just a slight like, brown sludge. It, it's like thick soda water. It's not nice, man. I mean, I guess what... Because you say soda, but I mean, there's so many different variations. It could be Coke, well, this, it could this, be this, this a cola, Coke. it could this was be... Coke. It's not a Sprite. You can have a Sprite with milk. Ew. Sounds fucking disgusting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, not much better than, you know, fucking brown cola and milk. Brown cola uh, is my black exploitation film. Right, black cola. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> I was informed by a d- on the way out. Not really something you gotta say. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to wish black people in your life black, happy Black yeah. History Month. Black Panthers in 15 days, yo. Yo. <laughs> How was your day? Of sir? which everybody is. I mean, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in a better mood. I was shitty all week, and I feel. I, I apologize to the people on the podcast if I was a little, just on the fucking rag. I want you to I'm keep in a in much mind better the mood. The most recent thing we talked about for them is SIDS. <laughs> that was my bad. <laughs> well, see, talk about SIDS makes me laugh. It makes me happy. Yeah, that's that's, so. that's also part of the problem. But. <laughs> You know, it's one like, thing at a time. I got, I got a good laugh out of you today when I said... Uh, oh, God, that was <laughs> so I said, fucked up. We were, we, were, we were talking about a, a hypothetical situation where I was getting into an argument with my boss. And I said, I'm going to gaslight your wife until she kills herself. <laughs> and see, but I love finding those dark places. <laughs> and it's, it's like, you know, suicide's fucked up. Gaslighting's <laughs> fucked up. But just the specificity of him saying gaslighting. And then the vagueness of the concept of gaslighting. <laughs> you just, can't protect somebody against right. gaslighting. And just how fucking off the cuff there was no pause between <laughs> what I said and him saying that. Just fucking right there, ready to rock, full tilt. It was fucking great. <laughs> so that, that's why that was the funniest shit I heard all day. What's a Nubian? Oh, that, I, I don't know if we can reference yeah, it. Was so, yeah, it was uh, the, uh, the Star Wars Phantom Menace scene where... Uh, Watto meets, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Brian Mills. What was that? Brian Mills. Brian Mills. Taken. Ah. Brian Liam Neeson's cock. Give me the hyperdrive generator right now. That'll be the end of it. I won't pursue it. Qui Gon Jin. Yeah, there you go. Why did it take me so long to come up with Qui Gon Jin? Because I kept doing the taking thing all the time. <laughs> so he's like, oh, it's a ship you got is a Nubian. Uh, what's a Nubian? <laughs> There was a time where we would, 
we were we were going over Star Wars lines, but putting Donald Trump in it. Oh, Donald Trump doing a uh, Emperor's lines. Which one day I think we got to break out a script and oh, do that for real. Yes. So that and the script clerks, to the voices of Rick and Morty, <laughs> where Morty is Rick Randall. <laughs> Rick is Dante. Oh, gee, Rick, how much do you think the average jizz mopper makes an hour? <laughs> What's a jizz mopper, Morty? <laughs> yeah, we're, this is life. It's, this whole series of down notes. What's a, what's a nudie? <laughs> Girl, Sus who crave much. cock. Girls who crave cunt. <laughs> Thick black cocks with pearly white cum. Men alone, the KY connection. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what, what was yours again? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a berserker. <laughs> Oh, Berserker, look at me! <laughs> <laughs> my, girl, my girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. God damn! <laughs> Sorry to our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to a screeching halt. <laughs> but I'm in a good mood! Hey, good mood! I should be in a shitty mood, but I'm no longer in a bad, bad mood. Saying you should be in a shitty mood will never help your mood. <laughs> I don't deserve to be happy right now. <laughs> Fucking not with that attitude. <laughs> Just, just, just sublimation and self deceit. Jesus, man, just fucking get to work. <laughs> a healthy dose of caffeine and alcohol. Foot in front of the other, man. <laughs> but I'm much better now. I'm in a good mood right now. Getting paid first of the month. Black Panther. Everyone's really. It's funny to see how like a lot of like. I mean, I'm glad that Black Panther is getting like good press, yeah. and it's a you know because you would think oh uh, you know there's people who are like. Uh, you know, that's only, you know, that's, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I, I don't know if I, mean, I want to <laughs> help you with this. I need to know where well, the no, it's, it's, nice, it's nice to see that there are white people that are excited about Black Panther. There it is, are? It's very easy. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like very question. easy for for uh, for someone to have, make them throw away statement like, oh, that's a black movie. Or like, that's like like Wonder Woman it's, was supposed to be like, just for women. It's not like Medea goes to what? <laughs> <laughs> or her body. <laughs> Marlon Wayans presents A Haunted House 2, <laughs> The Black Panther. Get this man address. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I'd just like to say while we're vaguely on the subject, you know that uh, you know, the all-black cast paranormal spoof A Haunted House? Uh-huh. How the fuck did they miss the opportunity to call it Paranormal Blacktivity? Ah. Wouldn't that have been perfect? Or at least like a subtitle. Like a, a Haunted House, colon, Paranormal, paranormal Blacktivity. Black <laughs> Why did they... You know what? Now that I think about it, they... A Haunted House is the stupidest fucking name for a movie. They probably wanted to call it Paranormal Blacktivity, but it got pulled right before marketing broke. Yeah. So they're like, fuck, just call it A Haunted House, then we need to get this out the door. And there was an odd one with uh, Mike Epps, and it was about, like, it was like a black family during the Purge. And it, oh, bas- yeah. it, it basically took, like, it's, it was the whole premise of the Purge. Oh, it was it, called, it, like, Black Purge or something? No, that's the whole thing, is that it wasn't. It was called, like... Meet the Griffins or some fucking. It was. It was you know, I right. forgot the oh, name no, of the. No, I, I was thinking the the Fifty Shades of Late uh, Grace, uh, Fifty Shades of Black. <laughs> Wait, what? They had spoofed Fifty Shades of Grey and they just called it Fifty Shades of Black. Oh, <laughs> it was just you know, here's Fifty Shades of Grey, but with jokes and everyone's black. Oh, that's right. That was with um. A like, Wayans brother. Wait, no, but I think it's the son of like Damon. I think it was like Damon Wayans' son. Damon Wayans Jr. Who, who looks, looks like, exactly yeah. like Damon yeah. Wayans. What's what's up with that? Like. Fucking Ice Cube's son looks just like Ice Cube. Uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr. Yeah. I think it's if you name him after you, they just end up looking. <laughs> they like have him. to look like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just speaking of my brother, my brother is a junior. My brother's named after my dad. And my brother, just like your fucking no, he dad? doesn't. I look like just like my fucking dad. Like my brother looks like people on my mother's side of the family. <laughs> he has forgotten the face of his father. <laughs> Breaking news: Children look like their parents. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, just saying is, is, you know, but I mean, a lot like their parents. Like, we're, we're, we're cracking the hard hitting mysteries on this fucking episode. Man. Why does he look like his dad? Well, because of the cum. <laughs> the little strands of DNA sometimes get stuck in your teeth. And I, I, well, no. that's, <laughs> that's not how that works. I mean, I, I guess my dad and I have a very different relationship than you and your dad. <laughs> As soon as the baby starts teething, you gotta just brick in its mouth so it grows to look like dad. So it was my dad. My dad, he couldn't, he couldn't do it. Man. He, only, he only had me on weekends. He didn't have time for that shit. It's hard to get a baby to blow you. Yeah. Only got two days to imprint on him. Well, my dad doesn't listen to these. <laughs> back, 
Back I think the, my dad does, and I'm sorry. <laughs> back when I did like the, the video game newscast, I, I, my dad was, you know, he'd always buzz me and be like, oh, a little bit of your, uh, your podcast thing. Oh, mm-hmm. cool. No, let's see. I'm not saying any weird dad jokes. <laughs> Did I say what the fuck my mom? <laughs> Out loud? Did I? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was this complex? What, what was it you sent me? The, I was asking where I picked you up. And, oh, yeah. You're, you're like, where the. Oh, yeah. I said. Where uh, the books, Wi Fi, and the hand jobs from suburban milfs are free. And I was like, okay, well, we don't have time for me to go to my mom's house. I'm going to pick you up at the library. <laughs> yeah, just I hope neither of my parents listen to this because it'll get weird. It's. I but, mean, uh, I'm going to get angry phone calls. Oh, I'm pretty sure all comedians <laughs> not, not, not are. Angry. You know, old entertainers have like a thing where you know, yeah, yeah. If you're doing something risque, like you know, if you're like the woman that's starting in Fifty Shades of Grey, like I'm pretty sure she doesn't want her dad to watch it. It'd be weird if he did, but like, oh, we we saw your movie. We wanted to support you, so we saw your movie. Then you got the then you got the porn stars that like their parents are their managers and shit. Yeah, that's just fucking creepy. Or like or Thora Birch. Did you ever hear of what happened to Thora Birch? No. First of all, do you know the name Thora Birch? Sounds familiar, but I don't can't place a she was, face. Um, uh, of course, Kevin it. Spacey's daughter in American Beauty. Um, oh, the little sister in Hocus Pocus. The queen or mage lady in Dungeons and Dragons, the movie. <laughs> um, anyway, so like, her dad was her manager, uh-huh. and. Fucking sabotaged every single role she ever had. Not like I don't want her to work, but like I need to be super involved in shit. And like he demanded he be like present in the room during her shooting sex scenes and stuff. Oh shit! Which is creepy as fuck. And I guess he was like a porn star back in the seventies. Oh, which that's a detail I should have led with uh-huh. for the perspective on it. Yeah, I mean, so I like, think you it's probably like... pictured Kevin Spacey, but you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tune in next segment where it'll start right now <laughs> or maybe not <laughs> or maybe start right now don't, don't be a dick and try and get the last word in <laughs> okay and we're back oh, good job man <laughs> fix that in the whole other day <laughs> you, you remember that, that video <laughs> <laughs> well you, no. have, you have fun with your end of night rants <laughs> Which is just a fucking daily occurrence now. <laughs> Let me know when it stops being racist and starts being funny. <laughs> Quick edit. We just... I just cut out something very racist that I can't say on the radio or on podcast. I mean, I guess I could. I, I, I just really don't want hope, it to come back and haunt me. I really hope that you phone this one in and forget to edit that out. <laughs> so people are like, well, he tried to hide his shame, <laughs> but instead he wore it on his sleeve. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. If I, all the other fucking horrible things I, I, I do and say, saying something a little racist or a lot racist is probably not a, not a big deal. I feel like they'll still charge you for vandalism <laughs> if you do it with someone's blood. <laughs> <laughs> just because just you do worse things doesn't make what you did less bad. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like a bell curve of awful. <laughs> Wham bam. Right in the, right the cram. <laughs> Iron pussy. Tastes like a zipper. <laughs> I bet that's hilarious out of the context. <laughs> so it's Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. Go Patriots. Just by default. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My dad likes them and I'd rather have him happy. <laughs> so that's that's the dog I got in this race. Well, like it's always like when people talk about their sports teams, they always say we, we, oh we my did God. this. You know, oh my god, we're going to the Super Bowl. You're no. not doing shit. Like I love I love Star Wars. Like well, you know, well, wow, we broke 180 million this weekend. Like, no. I, I <laughs> mean kind of though, because like you went twice. <laughs> <laughs> True. But, I contributed. But, yeah, that you got like you know, you're talking how much money something made. You you can say we if it's for a movie that you're a fan of that you paid for. It like, just feels weird. Yeah, we made one hundred eighty million. No, I spent thirty dollars. But that, I, Jesus Christ, what? Bro, fucking forty x. <laughs> Did you go to forty x without me, you dick? <laughs> what the fuck, man? I make my own forty x. Sit in front of my TV. And I just lean you forward. You sit in the front row and go, you, you. Fucking like hold a lighter under a piece of rubber and shit. <laughs> that's why. That's why I spent so much money because I keep coming back. They kept kicking me out of the theater. Just start fucking whipping snowballs when they get to the seat on crate. 
salt oh, staring at the people behind me. They got a fucking canister of Morton tables out and whipping it around your head, hocus pocus style. It's like 40x, motherfuckers. This is a thirty dollar movie now. I just but, saved you a trip to New York City. <laughs> but anyway, like yeah, saying it for like a movie hitting a certain price milestone makes more sense than fucking. Oh yeah, we got all those touchdowns. You sat at home. Yeah, like or, we're going or, to the Super or, Bowl. Yeah, or like you, you sat in the field. Like you didn't do shit, man. You watched it happen. We got an eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, he did it. Wow, why would you be happy about that? <laughs> no, I'm just, I mean, yeah, yeah, whatever, I'm just trying to use this of the critics don't like your shit, man. <laughs> you know, you know what, Thanksgiving, if a fifth of the people there didn't like me, I'd fucking leave. <laughs> Sorry, Uncle Joe. 75% certified fresh. Why, man? <laughs> Uncle Joe likes me. Uh, do, do you feel, feel like kid does just, like, suddenly wash over you? A little bit, yeah. Because yeah, fucking, for some reason... Once you drive my car for like a few minutes, the temperature gauge, which has the needle fucking buried in the cold, mm-hmm. just fucking jumps up to halfway hot, and then it gets nice and warm. And the windows start to frost. It's like the pilot light turned on. Right. So like <laughs> something's fucked with my car. Let us know in the comments what to do. <laughs> what was it, Tommy B? Tommy B. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy B. You better know cars. I'm gonna keep hating you week to week. <laughs> you, you talk shit about pickles. Now you can you can claw your way back. Tell me what's wrong with my Redeem car. Redeem yourself in the eyes of the podcast. <laughs> well, or just me. I'm sure, I'm sure you love Tommy B. Like, we all regularly listen. Thanks, Tommy B. Looking, figure out what's wrong with my car. It's an 03 Mer- uh, Mercury Grand Marquis. <laughs> There's something fucky with the temperature. So you're, are you, do you have plans for a Super Bowl? Uh, yeah, we usually we go to my girlfriend's grandparents' house, and they've got it on. It's, it's you know, just her me, Colton, grandparents. Oh. They, just, you know, they make food, and they watch the game. Like I'll, I'll probably bring Dark Tower book with me. <laughs> See how far I can crank through. Um, really, what I'm rooting for in this game is for the solo trailer to drop. That's right. If, if that happens, it was a good Super Bowl. Tom Brady could be fucking shot on the field. <laughs> and I wouldn't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Did Donald Trump just kill Tom Brady on the field? <laughs> I could shoot Tom Brady right in his fucking beautiful face. <laughs> And fuck not, his, not even fuck lose his one, supermodel wife. Not even lose one voter. <laughs> so that's a- Suck his supermodel wife's dick. <laughs> you seen that fella? <laughs> Each night I thought Melania had high cheekbones. <laughs> one of the, the, you know, there's always bets between cities like, oh, we'll send you baked beans and you got to send us, you know, cheese steaks or whatever. And um, they said like... <laughs> Well, there's always there's always those bets in between cities where, like, you know, is, is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Like, it's it's like whatever that town is most known for, you know, they'll send you know if if you win, we'll send you, you know, the one of the best items in our town, or whatever. And I I really don't think baked beans is, but it's, it's Boston's known for like seafood, or New so England's like, known for seafood. Like, we'll send you a hundred pounds of lobster, and well, if, like, if uh, so, like when Buffalo loses. Do they send a garbage plate 40 miles east of wherever one? <laughs> well, like, what the fuck's Buffalo famous for? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, maybe well, what, Buffalo Wings? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, like, they're... <laughs> well, first of all, fucking stupid of me, but in my defense, have you ever had Buffalo Wings in Buffalo? No, I've been to Buffalo twice in my life. And I, I mean, none of the times were to, to have been. It's not really, like, a big thing, man. It's like, it's all right. <laughs> it's like because buffalo it, wings is just it's butter and hot sauce. Yes, yeah. is that, it's butter and hot. Yeah, you can make that fucking anywhere. <laughs> it's like it's your, your middling shit, man. Because the first time I went to Buffalo, it, I was I was living here. I was living in a, in a wor- even worse area than I am now. And my neighbor's like, "Oh, could you do me a favor? I need a ride." And I'm like, "Okay." To buffalo. And as the whole thing goes, he goes, "Oh, it's a little bit down the road. We have to take the highway." I said, "All right." And we're driving, and we're driving, and like, and you know, this guy was. By the time you caught on, it was too fucking. Yeah, and I was like, and I was like, and he goes, you know, and I'm like, I said, how far, how far are we going? Oh, we'll be there in about 20 minutes. We were already on the road for like 40 minutes, and I'm like, and then he, and he goes, oh yeah, and I I see the signs like Buffalo. I was like, we're in fucking Buffalo. Oh yeah, that's not a little down the fucking road, man. And like in the grand eat. scheme of things, it absolutely is. Like, yeah. Don't but, be a dick. Respect your elders. But it's, it was was your elders? Elders? No, he wasn't. <laughs> no. Don't 
be a dick. That's the new generation, man. That's, that's our future. <laughs> Unless they're exactly your age, I get to tell you not to be a dick. <laughs> I can only be dicks to people that are 40? No, not like fucking to the second. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, all right, so there was these two babies born at the exact same time. Okay. Right? And then, uh, you know, they live their whole lives, you know, 80 some odd years pass. They both happen to be dying at the same time. They're in the hotel. They're in the same. Ho- they're in the same hospital room. In the and same hotel. <laughs> Twins. Sixty ninety. <laughs> no, no. It's right. on a 69, 60 year old man and a ninety year old woman. Sixty nine each other. Sixty ninety. Um, so then one lo- leans over to the other and says, "Well, what did you think?" But um, bum. The the two old guys that right. lived in their eighties. They lived their whole lives. They were born the exact right. same moment. They live their whole lives. They want to, now they're in the hospital, about to die. And everyone goes, "So, what'd you think? Like, hey, how was life for you?" All right, that's like <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of those third grade jokes. Well, okay, like I, I liked it, and it was like <laughs> kind of fucking profound and made you want to cry a little bit. Like, All the best jokes do. <laughs> not true. Um, <laughs> not, not not a thing. <laughs> Like, wow, man, that's like a fucking five for fighting song. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I get where the humor is supposed to be. It was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> if uh, I were a stoner, I would just crash the fucking car. Dude, no fucking way. Oh, wow. Okay, so shit. I lost my train of thought. Oh, then the other time I was into Buffalo was to go see, was to go see yoga hosers. Oh. It was uh, it was playing at a theater, and I literally think the theater was called like the living room. And like, the, I mean, if you want to call it a theater, it was like a place. It was like a like a like a performance space, I guess would be the best way to put it. That they had a they had a screen with a projector, but you could tell like they could roll up the screen and just have people perform on stage, like do like improv and open mic night. You know what's really crazy, and we've never discussed this? What's that? I saw yoga hosers in the living room. Ah! It was, it was like the living room in my apartment, but... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> got, got a video on demand. <laughs> well, yeah, um, let me see, at the time... It like, it'd be funny if we kept crossing paths in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah, because you went to the same Kevin Smith show I went to. Yeah. And I Jen went to the same show. Jen has been a co-host of the show in the past. Yeah, yeah, in the past, just like Paul, right? <laughs> Paul is still part of the show, people. I have, he hasn't been written off. Don't tell them, tell Paul. <laughs> he's well, busy, he's, which he's, is why he hasn't been part of the not show. He's busy, he's fucking worried. <laughs> like, did I get replaced, man? Did I get, did I get fucking John Tron? <laughs> Who's coming with me, man? <laughs> that, might, that might be kind of deep cuts. Tommy B got it, though, I'm sure. <laughs> Because the game grumps, yes? Okay. See, I'm, I'm hip. I'm hip. Google limit, like, what the fuck's a John Tron? Not gonna let you down, buddy. Sorry about the pickle thing. Isn't that like when the wrestlers come out to the stage with their little video plays? That's the John Tron? Yes. Yeah, that's why they put John Cena's face before the match. Put it up on the John Tron. John Tron just like wasn't able to keep doing Game Grumps and like without really giving him a chance to say why they just immediately replaced him with Dan Evan. Uh, was <laughs> John Tron on like this Danny Sex Bang? <laughs> <laughs> was was he on the um, the tester that that PlayStation show? No, or he, one he, of the he, other guys? He, Eagle Raptor was on. Eagle Raptor. Eagle Raptor. Yes. yes. Okay. The the, the non John Tron Game Grump, <laughs> who's also not Danny Sex Bang. <laughs> Eagle rap. Yeah, yeah, he was on, didn't he get like eliminated week two or some shit? <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh yeah, as a joke, and you go on the tester, and then he show up and took it like really fucking seriously and yeah. lost immediately. <laughs> but he was acting kind of douchey though, also. And then his wife got fat, and everyone would be fun. Wow, fucking, that's deep. I didn't know that. That was fucking. I, I know too much about their life. <laughs> it's like, this is, I remember once he said, is Kevin Smith our Kardashians? Because we were we were naming Kevin Smith's dogs. Right. There's Shecky and Pooey. Pooey. And Mad Mardigan. Mad Mardigan. And then there was Scully and Moeller, but they're all kinds of mm-hmm. They aged out. 
Alright, well, that has been this bullshit for the week. That's this week's podcast, and I will cut to my other pre-recorded video, of, uh, pre-recorded audio of uh, all the fucking ways to get in contact with us, that, that whole cleaning house shit, you know. Cleaning house shit? Yeah, like two streams of one podcast, that net, and uh, the yeah, website, yeah, and an email address. And steal that from another thing, I'm sure. It oh, I do it all the time. I've done it, <laughs> I've you know done it for the past cut three episodes. Lift it from the Shatner thing. <laughs> Oh, from the Shatner one? Okay. And, like, include the part where it's like, oh, that, that's a long fucking thing, bullshit. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, so uh, thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Austin. Don't be a stranger. Have a week. Bye. You should be fapping. Let's, uh, let me do all my whole outro stuff. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net where you can find all things show related. Uh, you can find links to our iTunes page. You can uh, download, subscribe to us on iTunes, on iPhone, iPad, or iPod. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, you can download us on the Stitcher app. That's S T I T C H E R for Android devices. Uh, that's the Stitcher app. I use the available offline option and, uh, Listen later option, uh, so you don't have to kill your data, you don't have to kill your battery when your Wi-Fi spot. Get all the less episodes you want to listen to, and listen to them later. Um, and of course, we are available on the SoundCloud app. That is our hosting site. Um, I make sure all the episodes are downloadable. I think on iTunes they are downloadable, but on Androids they aren't. So that's why I'm a little like. But if you go to the website on SoundCloud, you can find us, and you can download them from there if you want to do. Um, if you want to write to us, you can write to us at twostrangersonepodcast at gmail.com. That's all spelled out, Two Strangers One Podcast. Uh, I got a brand new computer. Thank you to my dad for helping me out uh, with uh, basically a, a payment for the computer because uh, we're recording this on a new on a new system. And it sounded good when I was recording earlier. So, um, you know, thank you, Dad. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it was the old computer holding you back and not this antique microphone. Like, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, the microphone has, uh, it has, it has soul. It has yeah. spirit. It has you, you guys, you guys, you guys seeing all this soul in the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, it, um, I haven't, the funny thing is with the new computer, I haven't, I have this. I don't have time to sign into the email account right now, but no one writes us anyway. But if you want to write us, you can write us at Two Strangers One Podcast. Well, what, what happened to that Gmail. one fan that writes all the time? He he fell off the fucking face of the earth. I don't know what Literally? happened. Really? Well, I don't know. Do you think the Earth's flat? <laughs> oh, we got another hour to go there. Man. <laughs> well, let's go to the space station. Look. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, I, but you can write to us at Two Strangers One Podcast at gmail we want your money. We need your money. And until we set up a Patreon, what you can do is you can share and like us on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast. Once again, it's all spelled out. And share this episode, like the page, uh, share the entire page, and that'd be great. Uh, we also have a YouTube group, Two Strangers One Podcast Network. Um, let me see what else. Uh, we're on Twitter at Stranger Podcast. Um, no, I, I've only, the episodes that are available online right now are really only from the past year. If you want to go back and listen to any of our other episodes from more than five years ago, we are on YouTube. Uh, just search for Two Strangers One Podcast. You can find all the earlier 200 some odd shows. Um, you can find my Stranger Vlogs, uh, which I've done about 40 so far, and I have two in the pipe. <laughs> and... <laughs> Two up the butt, <laughs> two in my anus, like a finger, and uh, and I also have my audiobook. If you want to hear my second book, Odd I See a Tale from the Road, you can listen to it totally for free on YouTube. Just search for Odd I See a Tale from the Road, also available on YouTube, and that's about it. I can't think of her speak on. No, I got you never. <laughs> I was like, fuck that, I got yeah, shit I gotta do. If you, you guys can tell me how to how to beat this part of Zelda I'm stuck on, <laughs> Shoot, wanna... shoot me an email. Thunderblight Ganon's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thunderblight Ganon's. If you have any way to beat Thunderblight Ganon, you can write to us at two strings old podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> get, get some traffic in that email account. <laughs> Bunch of people telling me how bad I am at the game. <laughs> That's like the first like half of the game. Like not even the first half. Well, no, no. It's because you can, you can tackle those dungeons in any order. Oh, okay. Which I think is total ripoff of uh, Shadow of the Colossus, but for another day. You, you can't. Tackle those in any way. Oh, I guess. <laughs> oh, you proved me wrong. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm coming I'm to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening. Had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to the Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Austin. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. Chocolate. You should be fapping balls. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want your Double here? jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs>
Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C O L O N. Him punny. But. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I feel I, I, Oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history. Much like the recent Powerball, both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books, Heavy Metal, Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up. Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. $5 is yeah. insanely inexpensive. 15 is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! Come, I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I all. know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.